gentle, gentle. Get in there. Joey look like a burnt cookie. Like a burnt chicken nugget. You farted. Yes, I did. Oh. Everybody on YouTube is going to see how bad of a cameraman you are. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Get out of the boat with your sunburned forehead. So Brad treats his employees. You Bleeding. see like all of you right now. You look like a total goob. Should I take my pants off? Let me show you. Would I look better like this? No. Pull your pants up. Are you ready? Action. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Chill Outdoors. We are on Lake Mississinawa in Indiana. So we had a video that we made last year, and it was called Our Bass Boat Setup. And it's one of our most popular videos. So apparently a lot of people like to see what we keep in our boat, things that we store in our boat, and the way that we actually set it up. And that includes, you know, like some of the upgrades that we've done to this, like the trolling motor, uh, the fish finder, depth finder, all that good stuff. So that's what we're gonna get into today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the good stuff. For real though, we just crossed like 250,000 views. Only 5% of our views are subscribers. So do me a big favor and make sure you click subscribe shoot this video over to a friend and tell him to subscribe so we can grow this summer. Let's get into it. So this is a Ranger 178, like a 2018. So the boat itself was already pretty affordable, so we were able to do some upgrades. So starting at the very front, it came with a 30 foot pound thrust Minn Kota. We ended up getting a Minn Kota Maxim 70 foot pound thrust. I think I said that correctly. So. The reason we did that is because we wanted a very strong trolling motor and we didn't want to ever have to go up from, you know, like, oh, 30 is not enough. Oh, 40 is not enough. And we didn't know exactly what kind of adventures we'd get into. It's pretty nice because it's built into the floor. It helps with fatigue. We've been on the water today about 10 hours between two different lakes here in Indiana. And this makes it really nice. As you can see, we do not have our pedestals or seats in. So it makes it nice if you're standing all day. And as you can see, this boat is about as bass boat feel as you can get for having an aluminum boat. It is an aluminum flat bottom boat or it has like a slight V to it. So no, this is not fiberglass, but this is about as bass boat of a feel as you're gonna get. We do have a button up here to trim our motor and we also have a button for the nav lights and anchor lights. But let's get into the buckets. In here, we keep tackle. I have a absolute butt ton of tackle so you're gonna hear that a lot don't show them my red socks so this is one of the locking compartments and it's also a giant compartment in here we keep a bunch of stuff so we have some of the little bungee ropes we have tackle six cents tackle a lot of plastics oh more six cents in ropes but most importantly is our life-saving devices and I know that sounds corny but I'm serious it's important to have a lot of this stuff in your boat. So we have a throw bag, like a rope. Um, obviously we can use this for a lot of different things. If we needed to tow somebody, I'm sure it would pull a little bit of weight, but for the most part, this is gonna be a throwing device for life-saving purposes, but it could multi-purpose. We do have two. They are the life preservers that inflate automatically if you get into water, and we have them set to automatic. We can also pull a tab. We wear these when we are riding around. It's what you would see any like mlf -er, or things like that, uh, wearing while they're like running, you know, uh, fast on the water. But in case we bring a buddy, we still have two normal life preservers. So by law, you have to have a type four PFD, a throwable device. So I think this is technically called a seat, a floatable seat, but all of our PDFs go in here. And of course the boat is a mess because we fished literally all day today. You can lock this up if you so choose. We don't typically lock this one. We do keep a net. We don't use it too often, but we have one in case we need it. I don't know how many boats are coming with these little compartments, but this is so nice. Keep two or three pairs of pliers, two or three pairs of scissors. Boop, right in front of the windshield. Come over to this side. We have our rod locker. Of course, we store our rods in here. So Joey and I both live on bodies of water. Joey will take his rods with him most days. All my stuff stays in here because the boat stays at my house. We are, let's see, there's seven rod slots, but we have easily stored, what, more than 15 in here before. We'll put two to a slot, three to a slot, especially when we have the rod protectors on them. We also typically store the fish finder in here because this is also a locking one and it's super secure. We also keep our lights for the front and back of the boat you know, the little ones on a pole. We keep all that in there. 
And if you wanted to store other things in here, you definitely could. Like, let's say you always kept your rods up on the deck. You could easily fill this with trays. I mean, easily. Coming up here to the dash, we don't have too many buttons. We got a horn. We have the bilge pump. We have an empty switch if we wanted to do other lights, which I think I would like to do lights inside here. It's very hard fishing at night because the only interior light is down here under the dash. So we might utilize this extra accessory switch and go ahead. I thought it would be cool to put lights in the live well and maybe under this uh, little bevel right here. Definitely something we could do um, because we also have extra batteries, which we'll talk about in a minute. So over on this side, we have our aerator, auto and manual, and we also have another button for the, the lights, the anchor lights. Something else that we upgraded, it came with like a 3X hook. It's like a $100 fish finder, it was total garbage. We upgraded to the 7X TS Lowrance, and it actually works really good for us. We are not professionals, and this only cost us a couple hundred dollars more than the 3X. When we're fishing in Indianapolis, we do not have to worry about using grippers because Oh, let's see. You got to go about an hour from Indianapolis to find pike, musky, walleye, anything like that. We don't have anything that's toothy. You might get lucky and hook into a big catfish, but we keep these in here for days like today because there is, um, I think there's at least walleye in here and maybe some other toothy critters. But, so we do keep these in here and we just keep it right here on the throttle next to the kill switch. Obviously, you're supposed to clip this on to yourself so that way if you get thrown out of the boat, it cuts the engine off. Just a normal throttle. You have a button that puts it out of neutral into forward or reverse. And we also have trim button right here on the throttle, which makes that really nice. Okay, so this is where I'm probably gonna differ from a lot of people. A lot of people are gonna have tackle and rods and life preservers. It's this stuff that kind of sets most people apart. So we do keep a lot of different stuff in here. Along with safety, life preservation, all that good stuff, we do keep a first aid kit. The only things I've really put inside there is your typical stuff, Neosporin, Band-Aids, gauze, tapes, things like that. Um, but we also keep eye drops in there. A lot of people don't think about using eye drops. We do keep super glue, super glue also for cuts, mostly for our lures though, if you wanna glue something like a swim bait onto a hook or a Ned rig, things like that. God, I have the TP. We keep a wrench for the uh, prop lug. We have never had to change a prop on the water, but we have destroyed a prop before in the past. So it's important to have this. This is the hub kit for inside one of your props. So another very important thing, because if you're on a giant lake like this, or uh, if you're down south or out west and you're on a giant lake and you don't have somebody you can call, you blow out your hub kit, or if you tear up your prop and you don't have one of these, you might be out of luck. Small tool kit, goes without saying, again, in case you have to work on something. We keep some dry bags in here. We keep some random gloves, latex gloves, latex gloves. Like I said, dry bags and tons of towels. If you fall in a lake, you get cold real quick. So we keep tons of towels in here. We actually took some out. We used some the other day. And sunscreen, which Joey should have used on his forehead today. Because it is burnt. Joey looked like a burnt cookie. Like a burnt chicken nugget. You farted. Yes, I did. Oh. It stinks too. All right, under the driver's seat, we always keep our registration, instruction manuals, uh, owner's manuals, all that good stuff. But of course, on top of it, a ton of tackle. Craws, uh, drop shots, brush hogs, sankos, and flukes. A bunch of stuff I just haven't opened. A bunch of cheap worms. Terminal tackle, terminal tackle, tubes. Oh, two pairs of pliers, a bunch of micro USB, uh, USB-C plugs because running the GoPros will run them on batteries. Two or three different scales in case you catch your PB. This little GoPro handle thing that we've never used. Good thing we bought that and it's floating. A screwdriver, batteries, more tackle. All kinds of goodies. More hand warmers in case we get out here on a cold night. Or if something happens and the boat won't go, go. And we get stuck, stuck and we get cold, cold. This garbage thing. Go watch my LTB videos. They're a total scam. It's the only reason I keep them in the boat just so I can call them out. Monster Bass, go check out Monster Bass. They're actually the most legit box company we've seen. We got some line, we got some guns, we got some keys. Yes, I said guns. You always gotta have a gun. Ruler, obviously, if you're trying to measure fish. Swim baits, we have so much tackle in this boat, it's not even funny. A ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of swim baits. A knoff, a lantern. I don't even know if this works. I just bought that. Oh, for real? Does it yeah, work? Yeah, it's so bright. Oh, sun. 
All right, so Joey got us squared away with a lantern. Gentle, gentle. Get in there. That was excessive. All right, so we have two storage compartments back here. But when people come out on the boat, we'll either let them throw their tackle boxes in here. Joey's tackle box, boom, fits right in there. Or these are really nice for dumping ice and sodas into. Especially if you are gonna be out on a hot day and you need to store stuff somewhere. You can save your deck space. Don't have to bring out a cooler, dump ice in both of these, throw some drinks down in there. Now here is where we made some big changes that a lot of people probably wouldn't even think about. So in the very back here, this boat came with two small batteries. We upgraded to three full-size Interstate Marine batteries and that was not a cheap upgrade. So you have your gas tank, you have all your wiring, and you have these three batteries. Another thing that we did is we installed one of those uh, dual battery chargers. So. One of these batteries is going to be your crank. That's to start the motor, right? These other two are for the trolling motor and all the other stuff in the boat. Dual battery charger, and that just plugs right in at the house, and that is actually a really nice feature. So if you're looking into getting a bass boat, I would definitely recommend a charger that is just already built into the boat. Very nice. Very, very nice. And, of course, the motor is a Mercury 4-stroke 60 horsepower. This is not a heavy boat. We can still get this boat up to about 40 miles an hour with two grown men and all this stuff in it. You can get up to a 75 horsepower if you go up to the uh, 188 or the 198, you can get bigger motor sizes. But for us on a Ranger 178, we just went with the 60 horsepower. And again, we don't go out to a lot of really big bodies of water. If you like this video, send it to a buddy who might be looking for a boat. Send it to your buddies who might be looking to set up their boat for the year. Check out some of our last videos of the Monster Bass Box and all the other subscription boxes. They're super popular right now. A lot of people are looking into them. You should too.